Okay, welcome to the teaching video on crossover and independent assortment. Uh, these are often sticking points for students, so we thought it'd be beneficial to uh, take a look at them in a little bit more detail with the teaching video. So the first one we'll look at is crossover. Uh, so crossover occurs during meiosis, and crossover is an essential feature that contributes to the genetic diversity that we get with meiosis. So we're going to draw just a couple of pictures here. We know that during uh, prophase one of meiosis, we know that something happens here. So we know that homologous chromosomes, so I'm going to just draw those. Here's homologous chromosomes. They pair up. Okay, and when they pair up, they form what's called a tetrad. Tetrad is the prefix for four. So you see four of these uh, chromatids all lined up together. The whole process of pairing up is called synapsis. Now you're going to see a question like this, and they make sure you give all the terminology and all the details when you're answering this type of question. So you can't just say that they pair up. Tell me that the pairing up process is called synapsis and they're forming uh, the tetrads. When they do that, we know that these homologous chromosomes are uh, very similar, but they're not identical. So these two guys here, of course, are called sister chromatids. And they're joined, of course, by a centromere. Okay, so what's happening? These sister chromatids are identical. This, these two sister chromatids here are not. Now, they're homologous because they're very similar. And what I mean by that is if there is a gene over here, uh, let's say that gene codes for brown eyes, this sister chromatid would have exactly the same one. Okay, but uh, the other homologous pair will have the same gene location. So that's what makes homologous chromosomes similar in the sense that they have exactly the same genes located at the exact same location, but they might be different forms of the same gene. So that's, let's say, eye color gene located at that locus. On the homologous pair, that gene for eye color will be located at the same locus or location, but it might have a different form of the same gene. This one might be coding for blue eyes. So we say that that is a different allele. Alleles signify the same gene, but a different form of that same gene. So homologous pairs are similar, but not identical because they might be carrying a different form of that same gene, different allele. So what we know about this is these two here are called non-sisters. So non-sister chromatids. Now, if we didn't have crossover, and this is the whole process that we're, we're talking about here. If we didn't have cross crossover, when each one of these chromatids separated into an isolated gamete, we would have two of those gametes being identical, right? These two sister chromatids, if they separated it uh, ultimately into gametes, they'd be identical. These two here, sister chromatids, would also be identical. And we don't want that. We want genetic variation. We don't want any of the gametes. That's why we expend so much energy in developing very genetically different gametes to increase our gene pool. So what happens is, in order to make sure that none of the resulting four gametes at the end after meiosis are identical, we have what's called crossover. So during the synapsis process, these two sister chromatids, and let's say, let's color this one a little bit different not color, but we'll just put some distinguishing features on it. So what happens is these two non-sisters exchange, they cross over and they ex exchange genetic information. So ultimately after meiosis, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get, there's one of the gametes. This one has, let's say the B here, and that's gonna form into a gamete. Then we have another gamete, but this one is going to be different because of crossover. It's going to have some of the genes from its non-sister partner that are embedded in, it, in its chromosome. So even though this one will be the same here, 
this portion here will have different genes. So now these two are different. The, the sister chromatids going in look very different when they come on our, our when very different after prophase one. And then same thing with this one. So over here, uh, the other homologous pair would have pieces of this chromosome that would have exchanged genetic information with its non-sister partner. And of course the other one would be untouched. So we can see that at the end we are going to produce four different gametes that are very genetically different and that is the whole premise of crossover and genetic variation. The more different those uh, gametes are, the more different our offspring are, uh, the different offspring are going to be produced. And we like that. We like offspring to be different. That's why we put all our energy into sexual reproduction. One of those offspring may contain a gene. If you have a bigger gene pool, one of those offspring may contain a gene that may provide you resistance to a new disease coming into the population or maybe a better adaptation to a changing environment. Okay, so difficult concept. If you have any issues, make sure you uh, give me an email. We can kind of go over it. So let's look at independent assortment. That one's a little bit different. This one, if we take a look at, let's say, metaphase one, we know what happens is homologous chromosomes line up at the equator, right? So here's the equatorial plate and his partner is on the other side. So there's the homologous pairs. Now I'm going to show, let's say, paternal this way. Okay, so the lines show me that that, were, that was a paternal copy. And the maternal, we'll just leave as blank here. So that's the maternal copy. So those are homologous pairs. Again, they pair up during meiosis, mitosis, they don't. So what this is saying is that the orientation of the maternal and paternal copy of one homologous pair is completely independent to other homologous pairs. So we know that the maternal took, uh, I guess, on the north side of the pole here, or of the equator and that paternal was on the south side. But the next pair might be different. So the next pair might have the paternal on this side and the maternal on the other. So it's all random, it's all just independent. So you don't never know how many maternal are gonna end up ultimately into a gamete uh, and that's different for all the different gametes. So because of that, we get offspring that maybe sometimes look more like mom if they're carrying a higher percentage of maternal uh, copies of that homologous pair, or they might look more like dad, but it's all independent. And that also contributes to genetic variation in the offspring. You never know how many maternal or paternal you're going to get. Okay, so again, difficult concept. Any issues with that, uh, give me an email. We can go over it again. Okay, thanks guys.